Good morning and welcome to Livestream Faith from All Saints Church. My name is Stephen Gardner. I'm the vicar of All Saints uh, and the oversight minister for Oston, Carcroft and Skello, all part of the Red House Partnership of Churches in this north of Doncaster. Um, and particularly today, we pray for the Red House Partnership um, as uh, our colleague Anne Walton, who's the rector of Adwick III of the sets of parishes in our partnership, uh, is due to retire soon. So we pray for Anne and her husband Richard for blessing in their retirement. And we pray for the parishes of Adwick and Skelbrook as they move into this time of transition and change. Uh, this is Oscar. Um, Oscar's uh, been with our family since 1998, which means for a dog, he's ancient. Well, you are. Um, and Oscar is helping me out with live stream faiths. Um, you may be thinking, crumbs this has been a long time well um today is the 31st of november 2020 now i unless i get a really really good suggestion for what the next month of 2020 might be called tomorrow will be the 32nd of november 2020 we're not going to start celebrating 2021 officially until we can do it properly um but in three Sundays time, we will be marking our 50th live stream faith, including Christmas Day, including Good Friday. In three Sundays time, it will have been 50 times that we've gathered together using the wonders of Facebook uh, and technology and our super producer, Dave, to um, 
share a service together, to be together, even though we have to be apart. What a strange and weird world we live in. But in this time, our vision has become bigger. We have doors that have never been wider open. We have hearts that love and are loved in new ways with our food bank and all the other things that we're doing. And faith that shines. More and more people are coming to experience something of what God might be saying to them in these strange and difficult times through the contact we have with them through Facebook and through other things. And so in these days uh, leading up to Lent, which is starting soon. Um, we're looking at the Beatitudes and reflecting on the Beatitudes um, because the Beatitudes describe a, pe a set of people who are close to God's heart. And if we want to be close to God's heart, then those people need to be close to our hearts too. So we're exploring what it means to be a people who are close to God's heart in both senses of that. Um, every week we're, we're live streaming. Um, hopefully by now you'll know we're on uh, midday. Oscar and I are um, currently working through a gorgeous book on the Psalms. And that's been really lovely, just having a Psalm to reflect on every single day. In the evenings, there's a Bible reading. Uh, and then at seven o'clock each evening, we have a bedtime story. Um, and we are carrying on with our bedtime stories, um, although I'm I'm beginning to struggle uh, I've I've got a few bedtime stories, but I'm beginning to struggle for ones that uh, I might be able to read. So by the time I get to the end of February, I might be on the lookout for a whole heap more books to read. Uh, we also do something we call Telephone Church. Um, telephone Church is for those that don't do the internet, that can't do all of this. So they can just pick up a landline telephone and dial in. So Telephone Church can dial in on a landline number. They can listen in to the six o'clock prayer and Bible study each day. And then we have an interactive service together at 11.30 each Sunday. You'll need to ring me for the access details for that. It's fairly straightforward code. Hopefully those uh, the, the landline number access number is included in um, your landline package, but it's worth checking for that. But if even now, if you know someone that you think would love to connect up that way, Give me a ring and we can give it we can give it a little practice. They can try it out and then they can come and be a part of that. After church on a Sunday, um, we share coffee together. Um, that's on Zoom uh, and you'll need to message me or Liz Conway or the church Facebook page to get that link for Zoom. It's the same link we've been using for that as we've been using for our virtual coffee mornings. On Wednesdays, we get together for coffee. It's a lot of coffee at All Saints. It's part of our dear, well, it's part of our bloodstream, to be honest with you. So we have a virtual coffee morning on Telephone Church at 10 o'clock, where we all arrive and say we've got nothing to talk about. And then I have to kick them all off at 11 o'clock because then I have to move on to Zoom. And we have a Zoom coffee morning. Bring your own drinks. Again, it's the same link we've been using for coffee right the way through. Um, our uh, food bank is doing amazing things. And I've just suddenly realized that the food bank details are wrong because I didn't update them. So this week, it's not coffee, sugar and soup. It's tuna, cereals and squash. Tuna, cereals and squash, please. Um, we are so grateful. Our donated room is absolutely jam-packed at present, but that's exactly as we want it to be because our number of referrals is going up. And what that means is that we've got stuff we can put directly into boxes for people. So please, 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 please keep donating. The more you donate, the less shopping we need to do, the less shopping we need to do, the longer we can go on supporting families in this immediate challenge of COVID and the better we are set up for, for the long haul of supporting families into the future. So to everyone that's donated to our food bank, thank you so much much we're looking for volunteers for the food bank if you could volunteer then email foodbank at all church.net and someone will be in touch with you we're also got some exciting news about our edge center edge is um a ministry that's come out of cvm the christian vision for men um and our friend carl beach um but edge is looking to provide support to the poorest of communities providing real practical support and help. Um, the Edge Centre provides debt advice, benefits advice and advocacy, and housing advice and advocacy. Um, it's fully um, registered with the um, 
Financial Conduct Authority, so they can act as debt brokers for for you. Um, it's the we're also got something called Clean Slate. We're going to be working out providing training and employment support for those who've got really challenging stories. We're aiming to launch a March alongside the Food Bank Vision on Wednesdays, but also perhaps one evening a week at present. But we need volunteers, but specifically volunteers to help on the edge side of things. We'll need training together um, so that we can know how to signpost people to what they need. We'll be booking people in. The appointments are all electronically. So people will be on a laptop electronically through to um, a, a center where the experts are and we'll be able to access the help and advice and support that they need. I have so many people already lined up um, for EDGE. I can't tell you. Lots and lots of people struggling with debt at present. We desperately need this in our community. Lots of people struggling with housing. We desperately need this in our community. Lots of people whose benefits are just being mucked and messed around. We desperately need this. So particularly EDGE, but also the food bank. If you feel that you'd be able to offer some time to support the work that EDGE, the EDGE Centre is doing, then please can you give me a ring? Now, the thing I have to say is at present, if you're someone who is vulnerable to this virus, I'm gonna have to say, hang on. So if you're over 70, if you're someone who's clinically extremely vulnerable, I can't say yes. The insurance rules, our safeguarding rules, and our risk assessments mean that we can't have you as volunteers. I'm so sorry. I know there are lots of you that are desperate to help. That time will come once we get enough people through this vaccination program and we can begin to open up again. But for now, it needs to be people that aren't vulnerable. But if you could volunteer or you know somebody that might like to volunteer, someone for whom this whole area is um, something that they're very keen on addressing and helping with, doesn't have to be someone from the church family. Please, please, please get them to contact me and we can start that conversation. Um, another um, initiative to help out in these times, uh, our youngest son, Joel, is at the Doncaster University Technical Centre, UTC, and he's part of the student council there. And they're partnering with Laptops for Kids, help provide laptops free to children and young people. Now, there may be some children and young people in families that don't get free school meals, so won't get the additional provision that the government is talking about, but still need that access to online learning, but the family don't have enough money to buy laptops for all the kids that they have. So if you've got an old laptop still working that you'd be willing to donate, if, if there are some minor repairs that needed that can be done, it'll be wiped of any remaining data. If you haven't got the power supply, don't worry. They'll find a power supply for it. And then it'll be donated on to um, children, young people that desperately need it to engage with their online learning and then beyond. If you're able to, could you contact Joel via the Vicarage or you could search for Laptops for Kids UTC on Facebook and you'll find the Facebook page. There is a bit of a challenge to see who can get the most likes for that page on Facebook. And Joel smiled at me and said, You've got quite a reach on Facebook, Dad, haven't you? So I wonder if you were willing to go and like that page, share that page, and let's get the word out. Let's Because what's important is not likes on Facebook. What's important is getting laptops in the hands of children and young people so they can engage better with the online learning that we have. Um, our final uh, notice today is... Um, our cartoon. Now, I've not gone to Reverend Fun today. I've gone to something called Agnes Day. Now, Agnes Day is the name of one of the um, uh, the pieces of music uh, in the, the Latin communion service. Um, but uh, Agnes, Day, uh, Agnes Day is a name of a cartoon. So do go and check out these cartoons. They're very funny. There's one for the lectionary, the set Bible readings every week of the year. But this one was um, about our readings today. The first sheep, I can't ever say that I've been persecuted for righteousness sake. Me either, says the second sheep. First sheep, because you think that's because we've been blessed with a culture that has bought into Christianity. Second sheep, that might be it. Or we've got a Christianity that's sold out to our culture. Mmm. Cartoons with rocks in. So, as we continue to think 
and pray together. We have today's collect, the special prayer for today. God of heaven, you send the good news to the ends of the earth and your messengers to every nation. Send your Holy Spirit to transform us by the good news of everlasting life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so let's pray together our vision prayer. Living God, Jesus calls his followers to seek first your kingdom. Renew us as we make your love known. Release us to share freely together in mission and rejuvenate us to be fruitful in your service. Give us courage, wisdom and compassion that strengthen with the grace of the Holy Spirit. We may, as the Diocese of Sheffield, both flourish and grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. And later in our service today, we're going to be sharing bread and wine together. So you might want, as we move through our service, just to make sure you've got some bread to hand, uh, have a cup or a glass or, or a mug with uh, some wine or some sherry, which is what I use, or just some juice. And we'll share bread and wine together towards the end of our service today as a reminder of God's goodness and faithfulness to us. But now we're going to declare our faith, that faith which God sends to the very ends of the earth. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. in 
the life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe. So this week's challenge was to take a self-portrait um, to share with us something that says something about who you are and what you do. Who am I? Um, and first up is Liz, Liz Conway, who shared this, which technically isn't a self-portrait. It's a portrait of her uh, done by our amazing super producer, uh, Dave, and his wife, Sal. Um, for Blowing Wind and Tongues of Flame, which we recorded for Pentecost. But Liz said she's not really one for pictures. She's more one for words. And this is what she wrote. This is all I am. I eat, I work, I sleep. I dream, I love. I have words to say, songs to sing. I rest in your arms, created by your hands. This is all I am. Thanks, Liz. Next up who was very quickly, it was Helen Gadsby. And this was, it's actually an animated GIF. Check it out on the website. Uh, it hasn't translated onto PowerPoint, sadly. Um, but but this is this is Helen's self-portrait. Not entirely convinced it's a self-portrait there, Helen, but um, it did make me giggle really, really, really. So thank you for that. Uh, next up is Steph. Um, it's a self-portrait with her husband, Dave, uh, back in what she and I refer to as the Bunty days, which is generally tending to refer to the mass of curls in that wonderful sort of um, 80s perm style that we all remember and loathed. Sorry, loved so much. Thanks, Steph. The next up, again, isn't a self-portrait. Well, it sort of is. Um, Ken Trinder used to be a school photographer. And with his uh, friend, Brian Ross, uh, they were taking photos in a school and they found this book and asked the head teacher to take a photo of them reading it. For those of you who can't read it, it says, my first photography book. And and Brian's sort of looking uh, quite um, quite pleased. Um, Ken is looking remarkably startled. Um, so uh, hopefully he learned some lessons that day. But thanks for that, Ken and, and Brian. That really did make me laugh quite a lot. Next up, we have Ingrid. Uh, Ingrid on her narrow boat tucked away in a marina near Napton um, while overwintering because lots of the canal network is is inaccessible. But she's there with Buster um, and some of the other things that mean a huge amount to her, the flowers, her music and her faith um, all aboard their narrow boat, which is um, something very special. And thank you so much. For that picture, Ingrid, is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, next up is Stuart. Or is that Lisa? It's hard to tell. I think it's Stuart. Um, just a, <coughs> a reminder, today is officially known as the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple. It's also called Candle Mass. And today officially marks the end of the church's celebration of Christmas. So if, like us, you've decided to leave some Christmas decorations up for a bit longer, today's probably a good day to take them down. Because at this point, the church turns away from the celebration of Christmas and starts to look towards Lent and towards the celebrations of Jesus' death and resurrection. 
Good Friday and Easter Day. So, Stuart, I think you're going to have to retire your Santa hat. Uh, but thank you for that self-portrait um, and for very kindly obscuring quite a lot of your face. Much appreciated, sir. Uh, next up is uh, John Halford with his two Volvos. Um, if I had to vote anybody in our church family is most likely to own two uh, vintage Volvos, it would be John. However, I do have an apology to make. It's like one of those newspaper apologies where they print it somewhere on page seven. Last week, John's photo was of a sign of hope and it was a sign to hope where there was a youth hostel. And I completely misread the comments below because I thought it was John who had got banned from a youth hostel in Hope. Um, and I said he was probably the most unlikely person to do that. I'm afraid it wasn't John. So John, I wholeheartedly and unreservedly apologize. The person who got banned from the youth hostel was actually Steph, who if I had to guess, in our church family, who was most likely to have been banned from a youth hostel, Steph would be somewhere near the top of the list. So, John, I do apologise. And Steph, the right order of the world is restored. But, John, those Volvos just really bring back so many memories. They're beautifully kept. Um, and thank you for that fabulous picture. It's gorgeous. I love it. Uh, John Pescod um, actually ended up with two photos one of which is wrangling the engine of their narrowboat because John and Jane also uh, are continuous cruisers. They live aboard their narrowboat and join us through the wonders of the internet. Um, so John is servicing the engine, which is something either you learn how to do or you spend lots of money getting somebody else to do. Uh, but then John is sat there um, editing the Boaters Christian Fellowship magazine, which he does. Um, uh, John is uh, a retired vicar, uh, as you can see. Uh, and he does a fabulous job supporting the work of BCF, but also supporting many other people. And we're very grateful for all that John and Jane have brought to the life of our church family here at All Saints. Uh, next up is Becca. Um, Becca did comment that this picture was from 11 years ago. I'm not sure that excuses you from anything whatsoever. Um, and I'm not going to ask what, quantity of liquids had to be imbibed to get you to that position. Uh, thank you for that, Becca. There are some photos I will never unsee. Uh, next up is Terry. Uh, Terry sent this gorgeous picture of him flying uh, a model aircraft. Um, beautiful, beautiful design and a beautiful sky. Thank you so much for that picture of you, Terry. Very much appreciated. Next up, we've got Jan Halford. Um, who is in the garden? Jan adores her garden. She adores gardening. Um, so it's a lovely picture of Jan in the garden. Joan Lawton has this selfie. Now, this is Joan to a T. Joan wouldn't take a picture on her own. She'd only ever take a picture with other people. So you've got Steph um, and Olivia and Joan's daughter-in-law, whose name has just immediately disappeared from my brain so i do apologize for that joan uh, and to your lovely daughter-in-law i'm sure the name will pop up on message on the uh, the comments very soon but it's a gorgeous selfie of joan with the people that really 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 matter to her uh, next up is mine um my favorite picture of me is the one in the middle um which you know i use as uh, an avatar online on facebook but i just wanted to gather some of the objects that are special to me i'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a squirrel in that regard. I've got lots and lots of things along the shelves in the vicarage. Um, and those are just some of the things that are important to me. My family, guide dogs, lots of other things. Um, so that was mine. Uh, next up is Jane Pescod. Um, and these are some of the things that really matter to her. Her family um, on that beautiful picture on the computer screen. Um, her faith. Um, as you can see from the fish on the wall and the footprints poem, their boat, Ichthus, which is where she is. Again, they're um, continuous cruisers. They live aboard the narrowboat and cross stitch. She's cross stitching there, but she also cross stitched the poem footprints that's on the wall. Lovely collection of all the things that really matter to you um, and that make you who you are. Thank you, Jane. 
Kit. Uh, again, continuous cruiser on the narrowboats. This is Kit with Shiner, uh, Buster's friend and companion uh, on the narrowboat with Ingrid. Um, but Shiner really, really, really loves Dad. That's clear. Thank you, Kit. That's a beautiful, beautiful picture. Susan Brooks sent this picture. Uh, and according to Susan, she's the one in the bottom left-hand corner with the red jumper on, smiling a lot. Susan said, this is me, always willing to help a good cause, whether it's walking, knitting or sewing. Count me in. And, <coughs> and she's sewn these bears specifically for a charity that was asking for, for knitted teddies. And Susan has knitted lots and lots and lots of things, blankets and teddies and hats and scarves and um, uh, uh, jumpers and cardies to help, mainly to help and support families and children in really difficult circumstances. So Susan, you're an absolute star. Thank you for everything that you do to support so many people. Um, next up is Josh. Um, and this was sort of the inspiration when we're saying include um, objects or things that make you you. This was a project he had to do for his university course. Um, this is him painting his Warhammer models He's got his Nintendo Switch out. He's got a Pokemon out there. Um, he's got his laptop out with a computer game on it. Um, lots of other things on there. You could look at that for, for several minutes and find all the things that make Josh who he is. And I love the framing of that photo. So nice one, Josh. Thank you. Next up is Vicky. Uh, and Vicky said this was in the style of Picasso. Um, and I rather like that. That's that's quite something. It must have taken you a little while to do that one, Vicky. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, and next up is Kyle. Now, Kyle had done this drawing within a very few minutes or a few hours of the challenge going through. And on the left-hand side is his outer self. So that's what Kyle looks like. On the right-hand side is his inner self. And I can see a paintbrush and a palette. I can see, uh, I think that's a tree. Um, I can see a computer. Uh, there's a Pokeball there. There's a tennis racket. And on the side, his ear is uh, looks like a, a Nintendo Switch or, or something like that with Pokemon Quest on it. I adore that picture, Kyle. I think that's absolutely fabulous really really well thought out and really well done so today's winner is kyle well done mate thank you so much thank you to everyone that took part in that it's quite interesting trying to think what picture would share who you are with the world god sees all of all of us inside and out that's quite scary but it's also quite comforting because the Bible tells us he loves us full stop, regardless of what's inside or out. Who am I? I'm a child of God and loved by him. And so are you, or you could be if you choose to. Time for our reading now. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 3 to 10. We do not want anyone to find fault with our work, so we try not to put obstacles in anyone's way. Instead, in everything we do to show that we are God's servants, by patiently enduring troubles, hardships and difficulties. We have been beaten, imprisoned and mobbed. We have been overworked and have gone without sleep or food. By our purity and knowledge, patience and kindness, we have shown ourselves to be God's servants by the Holy Spirit, by our true love, by our message of truth, and by the power of God. We have righteousness and our weapon, as our weapon, both to attack and defend ourselves. We are honored and disgraced. We are insulted and praised. We are treated as liars, yet we speak the truth. As unknown, yet we are known by all, as though we are dead. But as you see, we live on. Although punished, we are not killed. Although saddened, we are always glad. We seem poor, we make many people rich. We seem to have nothing, yet we really possess everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
And thank you, Oliver, for reading that for us. Really lovely. Thank you. Um, so we're in the midst of our Beatitudes. Um, we we'll actually changed the order very slightly because there was one that fitted really well with the last week that we're going to be doing. So we've switched those two around. And today we're thinking about blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Persecution is something that happened. We can see it in the book of Acts as we worked our way through the book of Acts. We hear it in Paul's letters. It's where people are attacked and beaten and mocked because they're Christians. And it would be lovely to say that it's a historical thing, that it doesn't happen in our world today. And yet, it does. Persecution is as rife and as active in our world today against Christians as it ever was. There are Christians across the world, even now, who are meeting in their homes, not because of COVID, but because it's not safe to meet in a church building, because it's not safe for them to meet together openly and say that they're Christians. They risk their jobs, they risk their homes, some of them even risk their lives. There are leaders of churches across the world who are dying even now as a result of persecution, as a result of leading churches in countries that don't want them to teach the Christian faith. Persecution is real and happening in our world today. And Jesus said, Blessed are those who are persecuted, for they will receive the kingdom of heaven. What on earth does that mean? Well, to be honest with you, I think it means exactly what Paul wrote in that passage that um, Oliver read for us. Genuine, yet regarded as impostors, known, yet regarded as unknown, dying, yet we live on beaten and yet not killed sorrowful yet always rejoicing poor yet making many rich having nothing and yet possessing everything those who are persecuted will receive the kingdom the rule and reign of god in their hearts and in their lives and when it comes to persecution i think we have two things we need to do we need to pray we need to pray for the church that's persecuted across the world and we need to take a stand we need to make sure that our politicians don't ignore christians across the world who are being downtrodden Sadly, it seems sometimes our politicians are more likely to speak out um, against the oppression of other faiths than they are against the oppression of the Christian faith. And we need to keep our politicians to account for how they respond to Christian persecution across the world. And our cartoon today, I chose it quite carefully, actually. I nearly didn't. Why do we not face some of that persecution? Is it because our society has bought into Christianity? Or is it that Christianity has sold out to our culture? I'm not saying that we need to make ourselves deliberately unpopular, but if we have the favor of everyone around us, are we really being salt and light? If everyone says how wonderful we are, are we really the sort of people who are following Jesus, who spoke out against uh, injustice, who spoke out against oppression, who spoke out against religious people that didn't care about the poor, who spoke out against the rich, who did nothing to help the poor? Whenever our archbishops speak on the telly and people have a right go at them, I get quite pleased because I think sometimes as a church, we need to take a stand. We need to stand out from the crowd. 
not go along with it. And this is where the next bit, and this is often missed out of the list of the Beatitudes. But verse 11, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Have you had people speak against you because you're a Christian? Have you had people put you down? Have you had people dismiss you and belittle you because you're a Christian? Then you're blessed. But the only way we can have people do that to us is if they can actually tell that we're Christian. Not being rude about it, not being um, difficult about it, not being unpleasant about it, but saying clearly and openly who we are, what we believe in and what we'll put up with. I remember uh, on one occasion, um, in the last few months I was working for the company uh, down in Newbury before I went to train as a vicar, the company was going through some very difficult times. I was a project manager and I was told to lie to one of our clients about progress. And I refused. It was one of the first times I stood up against um, the pressure and for what I believed in. I was taken out of that meeting. I was not allowed to speak to the customer for several weeks. When the company finally went bust, I got an email from a very senior person who'd been working with the organization to say, I know why they pulled you and I want to thank you for your integrity. That's what it means to stand up for our faith is to be known for our integrity, to be known as people that say, this is what we believe God is teaching. This is what we believe God is saying. And we're going to live by that each and every day, no matter what the cost. Now, I'm not likening me being pulled from a meeting to the persecution that Christians are facing across the world, but we're each called to take a stand. We're each called to take a stand for what we believe in and against the lies and the untruths that appear to be rattling around our culture at present. And we're going to get unpopular if we do that. We're going to be persecuted if we do that. But you know what? I would rather be a church that's bruised and beaten and yet possesses the kingdom of heaven than a church which is comfortable and settled, which misses out on what God has for us. So maybe this week, gently, with gentleness and respect, as Peter says in his letter, blow your cover this week. And yes, opposition may come, but also great blessing will come as the kingdom comes where you are. going to sing now a song that talks about faith and faithfulness. Um, and one of the lines in this song that really rings in my ears, God, I pray the yes I give today in years to come will still be the same. And that's what I pray that my yesterday to following God where he leads, my yesterday to saying, I will stand up for my faith no matter what, that your yesterday in years to come will still be the same, faith and faithfulness.
Let us pray. As we gather together, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we leave behind the things that worry us and forget about ourselves, Lord, help us concentrate on you. As we worship with songs and praise and we listen to stories from your word, and as we hear your teaching, Lord, help us concentrate on you. We pray for the church at Woodlands and Highfields. Although the doors are closed, we pray that your light shines bright in the communities around and all and reaches all troubled hearts and minds. May your presence fill every home and heart that is open to you and your peace be known throughout to the world. Help us live to your word more and more each day as servants of God and allow us to be mindful of our actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for the moment, for the ongoing pandemic. We pray for more and more people to be vaccinated and that we will get back to normal as soon as possible. We ask that you help heal people's hearts and minds who are anxious and troubled at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for our community, Woodlands and Highfields and all the other areas that our church reaches. We ask that those who have lost their jobs currently on furlough and those who are struggling at this time to know your love and peace and that they know that you are there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for your blessing on all those who are ill at this time whether it be through the coronavirus or for any other reason. We ask you to pour out your love and blessings onto them at this time and for them to know your presence with them. May they heal swiftly through your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, help those who are grieving at this time. 
those who have passed and their families in which great holes have been left. Pour out your grace and peace upon them at this time. Let them know your love and help to heal their hearts. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So you're going to need some bread and some wine or some juice as we use these. It's not communion as we would take it in church, but we use bread and wine to remember what Jesus has done for us, to remind us of his love for us and to just for a moment taste that that glimpse of what God will do for us when we finally make it to heaven. So we pray. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Lord of all life, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You give us your love even when things go wrong. Jesus knew hurt and pain. Through him, you wipe away our tears and fill us with your peace. You made us all each wonderfully different to join with the angels and sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and his blood. And perhaps someone in your house would just like to pick up the plate that the bread is on and hold it. And when I say that Jesus broke the bread, would you like to break the bread? Don't share it yet. We'll share it together at the end. But just hold the bread. And when I pray the next part of the prayer, would someone in your house please break it? So on the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it and shared it with his disciples, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And if you'd like to take the cup with the wine or the juice in and hold it so everyone can see it. After they'd eaten, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave thanks and shared it with his disciples, saying, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now, with all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit, today and forever. Amen. And so we're going to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. And in word and sign we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen so if you want to take the bread, if you want to pass it to one another, and we remember that the body of Christ was broken for us.
And then as the bread moves around, perhaps if there's several of you, someone would like to take the cup that's already had the bread. And we share the cup together, remembering that the blood of Christ was shed for us. So as you continue to take bread and wine, I'm going to pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free the whole earth live to praise your name through christ our lord amen and so with brothers and sisters across the world we choose today to take a stand we choose today to take a stand for jesus and against a culture that wants to diminish and demean and discard him we take a stand today and we say, in Christ alone, my hope is found. This solid ground, firm through the fiercest. 
here in the power of Christ I stand. So next week's challenge is simply colours. I shall leave that to you to interpret howsoever you desire. But the challenge is colours. I'll get a page up on Facebook as soon as I can for that. Don't forget to join us for coffee after the service. Uh, it will be on Zoom as soon as the um, uh, the live stream comes to an end. Um, don't forget, if you want to volunteer for our EDGE Centre, um, helping with be debt, benefits, housing, advice and advocacy and clean slate training, please do get in touch with that. Um, if you'd like to be involved in that in any way, that would be very much appreciated. And please do pray um, for all the opportunities we're going to have to bless people. This isn't about um, uh, evangelism. It's about saying people need help and we're going to help. Um, so let's, let's bless our community by helping and supporting them in these difficult times. Um, the food bank, um, Dave, super producer, has updated the quick shopping list. So it's tuna, cereals and squash this week. Please, if you're able to just put one extra item in your shopping basket this week, that will make a huge difference. You can drop off at the Vicarage. You can drop off in the Boxer Co-op. You can drop off at the Willows, the first house on the left on Crabgate Lane in Skello. Um, don't forget, Oscar, you're going to have to get a new jumper for next week. Yep. Yep. It's Candlemas. So all the Christmas stuff is going away. I might leave the pretty lights on the crab apple tree in the garden because I quite like them. And they're colours, so I might. Yeah, mm, they're colours. Mm. Ooh, yes. Um, uh, but yeah, we'll have to find you a new jumper for next week because all the Christmas stuff needs to go away now. Um, and we have had a, um, a something of an agreement uh, on the Facebook comments that <clears throat> after the 31st of November 2020, tomorrow is the 1st of Fed Up Fury 2020. So um, enjoy Fed Up Fury. I don't know if it'll be any shorter than Covember, which felt like it lasted about six and a half months. Um, but um, uh, if you're feeling fed up, if you're feeling the burn, and lots of us are, then don't isolate yourself. Connect, even though it might take a bit more energy to connect up. Come and connect with people. Ring someone up. Ring someone you think might be struggling, and you can support one another. The only way we're going to get through this is together. The good news is I think all of the most, um, how shall I put this, um, well advanced in years, members of our church family, I think they've now all had a first dose of the vaccine, which is fabulous news. When my term comes, I will have my sleeve rolled up three days in advance just to make sure I don't miss it. Let's keep praying. Let's keep trusting. Let's keep spurring one another on. Let's keep caring for one another. Um, and let's get through fed up Puri as quickly as we can. So, a blessing. May God bless you with opposition. May God bless you with challenge. May God bless you even with persecution. But may God also bless you with the truth of the good news on your lips, with the joy of the good news in your heart, and with the bringer of good news by your side to defend you and to sustain you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. So, saints of God, let's stay at home in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. You can sound the depths of sorrow in the Father heart of God For the children we've rejected For the life so deeply scarred And each light that we've extinguished 
has brought darkness to our land upon our nation have mercy Lord. we have scorned the truths you gave us we have bowed to Sacrifice the children on the altars of our gods. Oh, let truth again shine on us. Let your holy fear descend upon our nation. Have mercy. stand before your anger who can face your piercing eyes for you love the weak and helpless and you hear the victims cries yes you are a god of justice and your judgment surely comes Upon our nation, have mercy, Lord. We will stand against the violence. 